Okay, hello everyone. So um, I'm going to go build some antennas today, but what I want to do first is I want to make up a Bellin. Now I do have a few options. Um, we have the FT24043, and this is probably what you'll get from JCAR instead. Um, I think it's an FT140, and it's not Type 43, although this one is. I did buy it online, but L15 is close enough where it shouldn't be a problem. So the way I can check um, the first thing I want to do, sorry, I just want to check the choking impedance of these um, these uh, toroid cores. So what we do, we just go through once, go through again. So we'll go up to four turns. I just realized I was showing you the wrong channel. Sorry about that. I should have had um, trace one on. There we go, sorry negative 14 db um not really sure how much you need for a transformer core but i'm gonna do probably let's say six windings for good luck so we'll go up to six and we'll see how much choking impedance that is and that'll be um what we're going to use for winding our transformers okay let's have a look now and we have 20 db I'm not sure if you can see that. If it wants to focus, and then I'll just tap the screen here. There we go. I'm pretty sure you can see that. Now, this is where you can tell where the transformer is going to work. Um, yeah, see, it's not too bad. And uh, we'll go up to uh, the second half of, half of HF. So we'll go back, we'll recall slot one, which is where I've set it up and display trace one. And yeah, not too bad. Okay. So it's like 20 to 25 DB. Okay. So that's what I'm working with. I'm unsure how much you need, but I'm pretty sure that'll be enough just for a transformer. Now this stuff here, you can get from JCAR, but you don't need it. Um, just to kind of prove the point, um, what I'll do is I'll cut some just regular plain old one and a half square mil wire. Uh, I don't know how much, probably uh, yay much, I guess. It was always good to have some extra, I guess. And we will strip a little bit. Yep, there's one. Let's strip the other side. Now, if I do the same thing, uh, just to prove that this the wire size shouldn't matter, go around the core. That's two, three, four, five, six. Definitely didn't do that it very evenly. <laughs> it's all right. Now we'll try. So I'm um, just stick one of these in the end of the SMA connector. And we're still in the upper half of HF, I think. Yes, we are. Uh, you can't see it at the moment, sorry. Now, if we look, you'll see that the choking impedance is exactly the same. So it doesn't matter what wire you use. Um, so I'll just uh, recall slot one. So I know I was looking at 7 uh, megahertz before and we had about 20 dB there, something like that. Yeah, 20 dB. So the wire you use to wind a transformer does not matter, okay? That's all good. Now what we'll do is instead of just making this a choke, an inductor, we do want to turn it into a, um, well, what do we want to do, NFED half-wave or OCF? I do like OCFs, um, but because this is a portable antenna, I might might have a hand, sorry, might have it take a crack at making an NFED half wave. So uh, what I might do is cut another little bit of wire. I will not not strip this one so that I know this one here, the long one, has been stripped. The short one is not stripped. So what we'll do. We just twist them together. Um, I believe this helps with the, the flatness of the transformer. At least every time I've um, 
twisted them together, it does seem to help. This might be a bit of much of an ask for this uh, length of transformer. Might actually undo this side a little bit. Okay, so we have a bit of a twist and then that. So now we're going to wind it. So we go around once and then we go around through the core twice. This one there, one there. This is a, this wire is a bit unruly. I'm pretty sure no one else would use this size of wire on this size core. Um, but I am just kind of being cheap because this, I don't know, it's, it's worth getting a roll of 100 meters of uh, whatever. This is one and a half, I think, but um, you can use whatever. Really doesn't matter. And then, so we've got two turns. 40 to 9 to 1 is a 7 turns ratio. So in total, we want 14 turns because we've got two on the primary here. So this one here, my short one, I know what that is. So we do this. That's three. Four. Oh, this is <laughs> very, very, very shoddy winding. Uh, you'll see, though, it doesn't really matter as long as it goes through the center of the core. Hang on, I've lost my count here. Um, what do we got? One, two, there. Three, four, five, six, seven. Probably out of frame. Eight. Nine. I'm not going to get to 14 here. <laughs> 10. We're going to have to stop here, I think. Um, normally you'd go to 14, uh, but what's that? 10 to 5, 25. So this is a 25 to 1 transformer. Um, I will fix this up later. I'll just get more wire. Uh, but you'll see that it's probably actually not going to be too critical. Um, it's just the transformation ratio will be wrong. Uh, but as a transformer, it will still work. All right, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the thing. Um, yeah, we can do this. We can tie them together, it's okay. Because uh, this, this, this point, the earth point, gets tied together. Uh, this is our one that goes to the SO239. And... This is the end point. This is where our antenna wire connects onto. All right, so um, we'll give this a go. This is going to be kind of a weird transformer. It's going to be a, what, a 25 to 1 or something like that. Um, but it should work. So I'll probably have to cut the video just for a second uh, while I get the soldering iron set up and ready. Uh, but I'm not going to take any other cuts in the video. So um, what I want to do now is I want to check that this thing is an actual transformer and it's flat. And the way you do that is by having a dummy load. Um, in our case, our dummy load is just going to be resistors. Now, an end-fed half wave has a resistance of something like, what, 2,500, 3,000 ohms, something like that. So this is... Oh, sorry, you can't see. Still probably can't see. It's 2.2K. There we go. And the other one I have, um, if I want to build an OCF, I've got 200 ohm resistors there. But that's uh, going to be a different transformer. I, I can actually just show you that by uh, unwinding this thing, but uh, I don't think that's uh, good enough turns on it for an uh, OCF. Uh, alrighty, so we'll do this. We'll take one of these resistors. see I hope just gonna tin all these white oh, that's not solder this one's solder <laughs> getting confused just um... so the way these 49 to ones are usually wound is they're wound as a auto transformer so this these two wires will get connected together Oh, I really should have twisted them some other way. No, oh, it doesn't matter too much. As long as they, um, you know, behave and want to... That is some terrible soldering. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I'm almost embarrassed by that, but 
I guess this is only a test. I'm I am going to connect it to an SO239 later. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a dummy load onto the other side of the transformer. You will see why in just a second. So I might do something like this just for now to make it easy to hook up to the SMA connector. I actually really should get like an SMA breakout or something like that. Make this job so much easier. Oh, that is terrible. All right. Well, at least it's soldered together, right? That's that's what counts. See if I can refocus that. <laughs> so this here will go across the SMA. This is the far side of the transformer. So going through the load resistor, through the transformer, it's going to get stepped down. It won't be 50 ohms because it's um, only a 10, what's that? Two turns to 10 turns, which is a five to one ratio, which is a 25 to one transformer. So you're probably going to see about 100 ohms on the VNA. Um, if I actually built a proper, you know, 14 turns, I, I didn't have enough wire here, it, it would have been fine. Anyway, so what we do, we put our, that's our positive, I guess. And we check this, hang on. Now, if you look at this, yeah, look at the transformer. So we have an SWR of... Uh, that's actually pretty unhealthy. Hang on. I think I do have an SMA connector somewhere. Mm, this is why I don't like NFED half waves as well. It's a pretty badly wound transformer. Where's it most happy at though? It's like, I wonder if wonder if this is an actual L15. Uh, I don't like this at all. We can do better than that. Um, so what you're seeing... Yes, WR is the lowest around here. Uh, 11 megahertz. It's 1.2 to 1. Um, now, uh, I guess that's okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have to find that connector. Alright, I'm back in. I found my dodgy SMA connector that I use for the projects like this. Alright. Um, it's at this point in the video where I realized I swapped the um, the transformer uh, active and ground around by accident, and that's why my SWR went from 1.2 up to around 2 for the rest of the video. So um, I'm going to make a cut here, and I will fix it towards the end of the video. So unfortunately, um, a lot of this video is not usable. What I'll do is I'm going to skip to the off-center fed uh, portion, and then I'll bring in the 49 to 1, well, I mean 25 to 1 uh, transformer back. All right, um, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes in this video. We'll do the same thing again. We'll um, cut a bit of wire off the roll. Don't know if that's enough. Probably is. Cut another bit of wire off the roll. All right, uh, we'll strip one one of the wires because this time it actually does matter. I, I can't get these confused. You know what, I should probably take this back out. So that's one. That's two. So now I know that this is one wire and this is the other wire. So one of them's stripped, one of them's not. We twist them together again. So just uh, twisty, twisty. There we go. 
go. We have a wire that's kind of twisted. We'll do the same thing. Uh, we want somewhere around in the order of like five to ten turns, somewhere in that area. Don't know if I'm going to get that inside this tiny little core. I should have used the other, the bigger, you know, FT24043, but this has just been messing around, so it doesn't matter so much. So that's two turns, because it goes, we're counting what's in the center. So two turns. Go through again. Three turns. Go through again. Four turns, go through again, five turns. The amount of turns actually doesn't really matter. Somewhere between like five and ten is probably okay. Um, I'm gonna go one more because I've got so much wire here and um, I've got the room for it. Ooh, uh, the more turns you have, the more biased it will be towards 80 meters um, and the lower bands. Um, but otherwise you start, I think, having too much inductance for the higher bands. So it is kind of a trade-off, um, but uh, it'll be fine. All right, so what are we going to do? The first thing is we are going to connect one of the, sorry, from this end and this end, we take one of the ones that doesn't match. So we'll say like this. We'll strip this and not lose it. Oh, I need to turn my soldering on iron or on as well. So we'll strip this one. So what we're doing, essentially, is we're going through the transformer once, then we're coming back out this wire, and then we're going through the transformer again. And uh, that's, we got a end tap, a center tap, and an end tap. That, that's the idea there. So we'll twist him together. Bring out our soldering iron again. Clean the tip when it heats up, which it has. I just use tissue. I think you're meant to use like a sponge or something, but I, I lost that years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> tissue it is. All right, you can still see me, um, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, let's let's have a go at this. So I like off-center fed antennas. They're um, they don't scare me as much as n-fed half waves do. <laughs> um, I don't know how to really describe it. The n-fed half wave. It, I like the idea, but the problem that I see with it is that the um, the impedance just falls off a cliff as soon as you have any length of counterpoise. So what I mean by that is, if you have an 80 meter antenna that's an n-fed half wave. Um, sure, it's a high impedance at 80 meters or something like that at the end, but when you're on 10 meters, um, pretty sure once you're only about two and a half meters away from the end, you're at a current node, so 50 ohm impedance. So, uh, I don't know, I don't, they haven't really grown on me. I haven't really tried them though, I probably should. I mean, I did make the transformer just then, um, <laughs> not the best one in the world, but if the idea is just to get on the air, that thing's probably going to work. So we will tin all our ends. And what we have made is a center tapped transformer with uh, a few a few turns around the core. So if we look at it again, I'll just explain that one more time. That's, that's one of the ends of the transformer. It goes through the transformer into this thing, which is the center. Then it back goes through the transformer again to the end. Now, I think a lot of the time you make this the shield and make this the like center conductor. I'm going to try something strange in a second, but um, we'll start off with that anyway. So first I need my little SMA adapter again, so I don't have to shove wires in the VNA. Which side is which doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'll just do the normal way first. We will do this. We will solder him to him. Oh, hang on. Like so. That's not a very good solder connection. <laughs> we'll solder him to him. Come on. That's also pretty dodgy. Uh, we will solder the resistor. That's a 200 ohm resistor, which I can find in a second. I think it's on the floor. 
Where are you, 200 ohm resistor? There you are, on the floor. Okay. So now what we do, we'll take our 200 ohm resistor, tin up the leads, because um, this is old as hell. And, uh, well, I can probably just hold that on there, so that's okay. So now I have, <clears throat> across one center, center of the transformer to the end is SMA, this is the feed. And across uh, the other end of the transformer is the load, and I'm going to touch the load across the shield. So that should bring out 200 ohms, it'll divide it by 4, because this is a 4 to 1 transformer, 2 turns ratio. And if we have done this correctly, uh, this transformer is a lot better. I can I can guarantee you that. Uh, so we will go to recall zero across the lower half of HF. We will touch this onto our shield connection. And what do we see? Oh, okay. If I could actually hold it on there properly. We have a return loss of negative 20 and an SWR of 1.2 to 1. Hang on. You know what? <laughs> I know when I'm beat. Let's just solder the thing, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Sometimes I will learn. Sometimes I will not learn. Oh, I'm just going to disconnect that from the VNA. Uh, so the whole idea of these resistors is just to test these balance. Um, so you can see that even a shoddily made homemade transformer at least does something. All right, come on, get on there. I'm going to burn myself in a second. Just you watch. All right, let's have let's clean it up first. Okay. Yada yada yada. Let's just um, not not that one. Soldery here. All right. So <laughs> just to check from the shield through the load to the other side of the transformer, through the transformer to the active, through the transformer again to the shield. So we will reconnect that and we'll see what this transformer can do. So I just have to focus the camera here. As you can see, a return loss of, come on, really doesn't want to do it, does it? <sighs> Alright. Wants to be difficult. Uh, return loss of negative 20.2 and SWR of 1.2 to 1. All the way from, let's say, what's it at? 3.5. So that's 80 meters is 1.2 to 1. We keep going. Uh, 40, sorry, 7 megahertz, 20 meters, 40 meters, sorry, uh, forgive me, 1.2 to 1. We'll go up to 20 meters, which is 14 megahertz, 1.37 to 1. Uh, we'll go up to recall our number 1. Given the way these transformers are acting, I'm almost suspecting that this is um, actually L15, it's not 43. 18 megahertz. Uh, 21 megahertz, 15 meters is um, yeah, about one and a half to one. And at 10 meters, we're still 1.8 to one. So tra transformer is very broad, uh, broadband. I suspect that I've probably got a little bit too many windings because of um, 10 meters. But um, yeah, that, that's kind of the trade-off you make. Uh, how many turns you've put around this core uh, will bias it 
um, towards either 10 meters or 80 meters. So if you want um, 80 meters, you know, go for more cores, uh, more turns around the uh, torrid. If you want 10 meters, maybe take one or two of these turns out. Um, maybe that's worth demonstrating. Actually, um, it's not too hard to do. So let's let's do that. Uh, all right, let's have another go. Oh, I've got a bad connection somewhere. Here we are. Recall one. That actually didn't make much of a difference, did it? <laughs> I, I took out one winding, I do guarantee it. Um, yeah, 1.7 to 1. And then obviously it just gets better as it gets lower until a certain point. And then um, the transformer stops having enough inductance and it starts tapering off at the end down in the low stuff. But anyway, um, so yeah, for 80 and up, this, this transformer's okay with five five turns, six turns, didn't really make a much of a difference. So there we go. Two different options for transformers. Um, not sure which one I will use, uh, but the plan is I'm going to go to parents today uh, and uh, try and set up the portable antenna. And instead of uh, this being the load, um, the antenna goes between these two points here. So this will be the ground um, or counterpoise, and this will be towards the, the antenna, the main element. All right, um, there is one problem with this transformer. Uh, and you probably spotted it if you're familiar with the transformers. This connection right here, there is shield, transformer, and antenna, counterpoise. The problem with this is that this wire here is exactly the same as this wire here. And if this wire here is your coax shield, um, you're going to have RF in the shack. And you're going to have um, your transform... Your, Wiring is going to be all messed up. The antenna is going to be all messed up because this will act as the counterpoise. So what you want to do is um, bring these wires out a little bit more, uh, maybe, and wrap them around another toroid and have a one-to-one -one as well. So the one-to-one, -one, in my opinion, is not optional. You do need it. Uh, the one-to-one -one transformer is exactly the same as we had before, but instead of like feeding it through the transformer, you take like this would be one end of the transformer. And then the other two would be the other end of the transformer. And this here, this section here, would be a one-to-one -one if you have active shield, active shield. Um, you just kind of feed it through a few times, that's all. I think what I'm going to do, I really like off-center feds. I, I really, really do like off-center feds, but I probably need to play with an in-fed half-wave, and they're so much easier to feed. And if you have a... Um, a squid pole. Your squid pole is not going to hold up RG213, uh, and that's all I've got at the moment. So um, you can't really center feed the antenna. Uh, off center feeding, you might get away with. Uh, it does drag it down a little bit to the ground, so not the best thing in the world to do, but I actually will try end feeding. And um, because I'm mainly interested in 40 meters, and this, ent this thing tested okay on 40 meters, not so much on the higher bands. Um, I will try this. This is shoddy made. <laughs> this shoddily, shoddily made uh, N fed half wave transformer. It's only a 25 to 1. So maybe I might have to have a bit more uh, counterpoise on the end. Uh, maybe to just bring the impedance down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'll prove that I use this and I'll, I'll bring my little VNA and I'll. Uh, They'll test it on air, I guess. Um, I think this core would probably only be good for about... Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to work on 100 watts. I mean, I could try it and then see it smoke up. But <laughs> I think it's probably more like... Um, it's going to be at least 10 watts, surely. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. And um, I guess see you <laughs> in the next video when I play around actually using this thing. Uh, it looks like... A mess. It looks very dodgy, but I suspect it's going to work just fine. Um, what I might do is I might, because I'm not going to be using the uh, the four to one. I'll cut this one off. Hang on, like so. Cut this off here. 
Oh, actually, I'm going to unsolder that because I do want to use those wires. And I'll solder this up so that this here will probably. I don't know if that's too long. I'll do this. I'll, I'll do it this way. So this will be my one to one now because they're. Um, yeah. Because this already wound as a one to one, so I may as well just use it as a one to one. You just uh, twist them together and then through the through the core however many times. Um, for one to ones, more is actually better. So all this extra junk I'm gonna uh, feed through the core as many times as I can. Uh, six, I think, and then we'll do one more. The the more um, turns, the more choking impedance you have. All right, we'll do that. Okay. While I'm at it, I may as well actually show you the performance of the one-to-one -one, uh, Bellin as well. They are testable as well. Um, I kind of did it right at the start of the video where I just uh, wrapped a single turn around the wire. The way you can kind of think of this is if you were to short these wires together and short these wires together, this is just one wire around the core um, and it acts exactly the same as that. So I've got about seven turns. Uh, might be able to get one more turn in there. Maybe. <laughs> she looks pretty packed already. The more turns, the more better, basically, for a one-to-one -one choking balance. Oh, there we go. All right, so that one, we're getting less suppression down at DC. To me, that suggests that it's coupling together. So this is the wrong lead. This one here, we get no suppression down at DC. So this here would be the, the center pin. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I've... I do have a multimeter coming. Uh, my multimeter broke, and um, I've been borrowing my brother's, but I did give that back to him. Uh, in theory, it doesn't really matter which one you put on where, but I like having, you know, shield to shield, ground to ground. Oh, sorry, center to center, ground to ground. We're looking at uh, channel one log mag, the return loss. Oh, sorry, the, the loss. And you can see, I might have gone too many turns. <laughs> ah, that's disconnected. There we go. That blue line's right up the top. Oh, come off it. Yeah, this is this is that bad connection I was talking about. That blue line is right up the top. We have very little loss through that. Like less than a dB. So not too worried about that at all. And um, the suppression is what you saw when I tested the uh, going through the transformer. That's your uh, common mode suppression. That's 30 dB. So might have gone a little bit too far on the windings on this, but I really want to use this at 40 meters. I don't really care so much about the higher bands. Um, so this to me is fine. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll set it up for an NFED half wave. Uh, yeah, we'll just uh, connect it, I guess, to what we need to do. Okay, so this is testing. Um, this is a 2.2k ohm resistor. Um, this is the 49 to 1. I've got the 1 to 1 back there. I do have this counterpoise wire, which might be screwing up the results, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I have 76 ohms, um, roughly, uh, where the reactance is zero. Is it nanofarad? And we get you know Henry's over this side somewhere. So somewhere around there, um, we have about 72 ohms. Now we've got a 2.2 k ohm resistor here, and we got a 25 to one transformer because I, I kind of didn't have enough uh, windings to get through it again. All right, so testing we have an SWR of like roughly one and a half to one. Um, where I'm interested at least, so maybe this will work. Um, what I will be doing is I will adjust this amount of turns in this transformer here um, with, you know, just adding more of the antenna wire through it, honestly. And then I'll also might adjust this capacitor over here. Um, this is a hundred puff. I'm not sure what value I actually need. I could work that out by using, you know, the Smith chart and stuff like that, but I think 
I'll just do it experimentally when I'm over at parents' place. All right, uh, hopefully this NFED, NFED half wave will work. It's probably not going to be a very good multiband antenna looking at these transformer cores. I think they might actually be L15 and not Type 43 because um, I didn't. They're not labeled, and I'm not sure if I if I the they are 43 or L15. But uh, I think in either case, they both should work. Anyway, I'll leave it at that, and um, you know I'd have some work to do at parents, but hopefully I can get an NFED half wave on the air today.